What's going on guys? National Master James Canty III here and today we got a quick starter guide to the Scotch Gambit. We like to call it the Scotch Gambino on my Twitch stream and everywhere else. Shout out to the Scotch Gambino players. But today we are looking at the Scotch Gambit, a quick starter guide and how you guys can start playing it today. Throw your opponents off and use your lightsaber effectively. Let's get right into it. So here we go, guys. Now, the, the Scotch Gambit, there's two types of Scotch. If you ever hear the Scotch Game or Scotch Gambit, it's literally two, two separate openings, um, but stemming from the same thing. So here we go, E4, E5, Knight F3, a Knight C6. So from this position, you're usually going to see a number of things that Black is usually expecting. Most times, 90% of the time, is like Bishop to B5. They're prepped for that, or at least they're ready for it. They've seen it many times when you go into a Roy Lopez. But Bishop to C4 is going to be more like Italian game or Joko Piano or any kind of a fried liver, like whatever. So they, they expect this too. But what they don't expect as much is the Scotch game or the Scotch gambit. The Scotch starts with D4. So after D4 happens, what they're saying is I'm just going to take some space in the center and I'm going to eliminate your pawn already while i'll keep this pawn here rapid development i'm going to move fast and I, I rely on quick development this is the idea of the scotch relying on quick development attacking chess it's really nice and this was gary kasparov's um alternative to the roy lopez he actually used this a lot wesley so did too as well many other players of course but the scotch is a is an alternative to the roy lopez and uh, gary kasparov showed us that so after pawn takes you have two options here now you either can take the pawn with the knight or you can play bishop to c4. Now, knight takes d4 is what uh, Gary Kasparov used for a very long time. He was very successful with it, plus record with the Scotch game if you check it. So he did really, really good with this opening here. But there's also another part to it which is bishop to c4. This one's not played as much, and this one is definitely something you should have in your arsenal, and you should be start You should start playing it today, right after you watch this video, because it's going to show you, um, you know, many attacking chances, and it's a fun opening, and a lot of times your opponent will not know what to do. So this is a gambit, and what happens in a gambit is that usually you're gambiting a pawn, or you're giving up a pawn, sacrificing it temporarily sometimes for rapid development or something else. Now, in this case, when we're giving up this pawn and playing bishop c4, instead of immediately taking we're actually just giving it up for some compensation or literally rapid development so we're going to castle quickly we may even give a second pawn and we're going to try to attack the king and we're going to maybe even take over the dark square strategy here which i'll show you guys in a minute and uh and, and you go from there you have a fun game you take your opponent kind of in uh, different different waters here basically so okay you have knight of six you have bishop e7 bishop to b4 and you have d6 i think is that it i think that might be it h6 is weird too i've had h6 before even g6 and i think queen f6 but these are all the moves that of course there's always many moves that happen in the in a mainline kind of scotch thing but we're going to take a take a look at a few here let's look at bishop to b4 bishop to e7 actually i missed the uh, main move bishop to c5 not main but stronger players play bishop to c5 so um, i'll actually look, take a look at bishop e7 first because this one's a fun one this one's extremely fun and i love to show this one especially to students when bishop e7 happens now we have a, a number of options here we can play knight takes d4 we can castle or we can play c3 stop the video real quick and what would you actually play in this position The best move, my fun move, what I like to play all the time is C3. So after C3, they have an option. You're actually, first off, you're saying, I am giving up a second pawn because I haven't captured this first. I haven't captured back, so literally material is not even. Black is literally up a pawn right now. But they can actually, I'm offering another pawn. So I'm saying, you know what, take another pawn if you'd like. Absolutely, take another pawn. You'd be surprised at how many people capture this pawn. After they capture the pawn, pause the video right now. The game's not over, but he in a lot of trouble. And if he doesn't know what to do, um, it's a wrap. So pause the video. What do you do with white? The move here is queen to d5 on the spot. Whoa, oh my goodness, it's about to get real. Queen d5, I'm hitting f7. Checkmate is on the move. So how do you defend checkmate class? Raise your hand, look at the board, calculate it. You only have two moves. One of them is completely disgusting and gross. And the other one, it, it feels like it's the same, but it's actually the best move. But you have knight e5, which just doesn't do anything. I just capture it with my knight. And this is even worse at this point. Now, and the second move, I actually, I'll throw this into d6. What if they want to run away, right? I, I think I maybe had this on one hand. Uh, I can count on one hand. Queen takes f7, and then bishop to e6 with a pretty mate there. Beautiful checkmate right here on d7. So uh, the move that they have to play here is actually knight to h6. So you're defending this pawn. 
but I can just snap this off. Knights on the rim are dim and grim and all that other stuff. Bishop takes h6. Get the knight out of here. Get him out of here. It's time to mate on f7. So we're removing the defender. That's the name of the theme there. Um, if you do need practice with your tactics, that's called removing the defender. So we're removing the defender of the f7 square. Now we need something to do. They either have rook f8 or castles or take it and just jump off the deep end. Whatever you want to do. Doesn't matter for us. We're still going to keep pushing forward. After bishop takes h6, rook f8. This is really bad. You might as well just castle, but this can happen. And if this does happen, I can actually take on g7 and defend this pawn. He could take this and bishop back to uh, to b2, and I'm fine. And I take collect the material and have a nice day. Convert, to, convert the advantage is coming. So bishop takes h6, and the main move here, the move that should be played. By the way, don't be surprised if you have people resign right in this position. People resign right here. I've had it. I've seen it done. Even 1,900 plus, 2,000. Plus, I've seen some money resign here. Now, of course, when you get here, it's it's easy to with the black pieces to be like, you know what, let's just start a new one. But you do have a way out of it, quotation marks. But it's just not favor, uh, you know, favorable for black at all. The way is actually castling. Now, with the white pieces, guys, he just castled. You just took a piece. We're up a clean piece here. What do you actually do with the white pieces now? You got two options here. Now, and actually one is the correct one. I'm sure someone said bishop to c1. If you are that person, hey, you know what? That's okay. You're looking at the entire board. Bobby Fisher says we fail to look at the entire board. That's why we basically suck to him. But after bishop to c1, you looked at the entire board. That's good. But what you didn't see is this is actually not the move. So after bishop to c1, it's knight to b4. I'm hitting the queen. Always make threats as many as, many as you possibly can, especially even, even if you're down a piece, which is black is, you know, Definitely down a piece here, 100% down a piece. Now he's making a threat here to the queen. The queen has to go somewhere, and he's also threatening c2 as well. So I need to cover this. The only way to cover it is queen to d1, allowing him to get his piece back. Wow, look at that, crazy. And then c2, I gotta move my queen probably to d2, because d4 looks weird and actually probably loses. It does on the spot. So queen back to d2, or maybe queen e2. So let's do this. This is probably a better move, just to keep the bishop open. Pawn takes knight, queening. Rook takes. We do a piece count here. We're even. If not, I think actually we're still down a pawn. Three six, three six seven. Correct. Yeah, we're down a pawn still. And he's castled. We have nothing to show for it. And it actually, we're not doing good here anymore. This is not what we wanted. So this is not the way to play. So the only move that you can make to stop this is bishop takes g seven. Because if we do anything else, this is threatened. That's why we have to come back to c one or be behind it this way so if they take this way devastating loss but what they'll have to do is take with the king and then we follow up with knight takes c3 and now after knight takes c3 the king is wide open and it just looks crazy yeah of course the material may be even but it's uh it's weird like this position is not good for him three six yes it's even even on pawns we have the same amount of pawns and his king just looks gross now um the engine recommends just bringing a queen back and castling queen side what i like to do is this is the jedi form of it is queen h5 h4 so our plan is going to be queen h5 h4 and knight g5 and bully this side of the board as much as possible so something like d6 he's going for bishop e6 that's his next move so i'm gonna go queen h5 now this move is not as strong the engine's just like they don't believe it, of course, because it's the engine. They calculate 30 moves ahead and, and more, right? But, of course, queen h5 to the human is very scary at this point. The queen's here. You don't even know what's happening. You'd be surprised how many people play rook h8 and hang this pawn on f7 because this is mate right here. Or not mate, but it's close. Very close. And our next moves are going to be h4 and knight g5. So something like maybe bishop d7 because they don't want to go bishop e6. You'd be surprised. h4 happens. Maybe a6 to play b5. And then knight to g5, and he's in a lot of trouble. F7's hanging. And if they take this, well, then thanks for opening up the file. I'm probably, I haven't even moved my king out of the center yet. But when I do, I'm going to castle queen side and maybe even rook lift in some cases if I absolutely have to. So gross position for black here. So that's usually the plans that you would have if they go for uh, the bishop e7 version. And if they don't take the pawn, they play like knight f6. Well, usually you'll see this a lot. In the knight f6 versions, you always usually push the pawn to e5. And in the main line, Scotch Gambit, they will follow up with d5. But in this position, it doesn't work because I actually ca capture twice. I get a piece, he gets a piece, I get another piece, he snags a pawn, but I'm still up a piece and it doesn't matter here. King d2 is very weird and interesting. I think I did this once and it wasn't that good, but uh, maybe king d2 
It's, it's just weird. Uh, why king d2, right? I just want to swing this rook over. But honestly, you could just play queen e2 and be totally fine. This is probably the move to do. So you can castle. Or trade the queens. Trade when you're up, not when you're down. I'm up a full piece here, so I'm feeling great. Absolutely trade the pieces off. So uh, knight of six could happen. E5 happens. Knight g4, e4. Wherever you move the knight, I don't care. I'm going to take this pawn and have an excellent game. I think actually here, this is a real game by... Uh, I forgot who... No, this is not the Nakamura game. Nakamura played uh, a different version. He played white. But knight e4 is bishop to d5 here. So this knight is looking weird. Knight goes to c5. Then we take with tempo. Knight goes to e6. And look at this beautiful position by white. Pawns in the center are looking crazy. This bishop's going to back up and help attack. We can play h4 and end up casting queen side anyway in this scotch gambit line. This is very nasty and it's going to be very, very hard for your opponents to face this if they don't know what they're doing. So after d4, let's go back. We have captures, bishop c4, and instead of bishop e7, let's look at bishop to b4 check, which does happen. You'd be surprised. There's actually videos on YouTube that recommend bishop b4 check. And I was actually, uh, when I first started, you know, when I was playing e5 myself, I have problems with the Scotch game, but not particularly the Scotch Gambit. I think just because I didn't actually get it that many times. But um, the Scotch Gambit is a very strong opening, and uh, people just underestimate it 1,000%. So bishop to b4, uh, c3 is the move here. And then after captures, usually they're captured upon. After captures, there'll be pawn takes, a c3, and I'm hitting the bishop. So you have two options here, or a few options, not really two. It's really three options that they go to. We'll cover all three real quick. If bishop e7, well, this is an upgraded version of what we just looked at. What's the move, class? Raise your hand. Queen d5, right here. And now it's even worse, because after knight h6, we take. And then after castles, I can just back my bishop up and have a nice day. Appreciate the love, big fella. I just get out of the way, free piece, and that's it. D6, and of course, this you probably still could go here. I just bring the queen back, though. Maybe even maybe even D3. Maybe D3. Maybe. Uh, D3 looks good, but queen D2, I'm just blocking this knight. But I'm up a piece, so I can do any, even queen D1. It doesn't really matter too much there. So that's bishop E7. You also have bishop C5. Bishop C5, well, queen D5 doesn't work the same because queen E7. And it's actually attack. Uh, he's defending this. And he's defending this at the same time. So you have to reverse the move order. A very hard uh, concept sometimes to uh, to memorize, but you have to reverse the move order, which is bishop takes f7, king takes, hit him with the check, king got to go somewhere, queen takes, queen e7. And I don't like trading the queens because I'm not here to trade queens a lot of times. In the scotch gambit, I'm just not trying to do that. I'm trying to make you, and like make you uncomfortable as quickly as possible. So I'll back the queen up to e3. And then I play in this manner. Bishop to a3. King looks crazy. Castling. I have a great game here. No problems. No problems at all. So that's what happens on bishop e7 and bishop to c5. Bishop d6. Is, this just looks ridiculous. This never ever is played. But bishop to a5 though. This one actually is played. And this is when it gets very complicated. We're going to attack f7. And we're going to say his king is stuck in the center. Let's do something about it. I'll show you a fun line here. After bishop a5. We castle. We get out of the way. First move castle. Next move, what they do is play d6 usually because they're like, yeah, I need to like get stuff out. I don't like this position too much. So they play d6. Now we keep the attack up, folks. What do you do? How do you keep the attack alive here? The move for white, it's not queen d5 because bishop e6 would be almost devastating. It's actually queen b3 hitting the f7 pawn. Also keeping pressure on b7 so the bishop is kind of tied down here. So black usually goes queen e7. After queen e7, guys, what would you actually do to open up the game? King is in the center of the board. How do we open the game? e5 is the move. Very strong move here. You have two options to take it, pawn or knight takes. If knight takes, they lose a piece if they take it the wrong way. And we capture here first if they take with the queen. Well, then you just remove the defender from the f7 square. And this is not fun from black at all. Now, what if they take with the pawn? Well, hey, lose pieces, lose games, big fella. Big players and big boys and Jedi, they make sure that their pieces are defended at all times. Not all times, but most times. And this is one of those times where you're now you're in trouble. doesn't matter where you check them. You just grab the bishop and have a nice day. So after e5, pawn takes is the way that they go. Now, keep the threats up, guys. Keep the threats up. This is not only in the Scotch Gambit, but when you're playing players and anyone, keep the threats up. Bishop a3. Hit the queen. Queen got to go somewhere now. Also hitting, crossing this diagonal. You in some trouble, big fella. Oh my goodness. Queen f6 is out of the way. Now we follow up with rook e1 and knight d2. I'll show you how it happens. Usually we go knight d2. I like rook e1 too. It kind of really doesn't matter. But knight to d2, knight e7, um, knight e4, queen e5, knight 
queen g6. Now, this is very interesting here. When queen g6 happens, now, if you get this far, first off, they're pretty good as well. They're pretty good to get here. And and also, you're doing well as well. Like, the king is in the, uh, stuck in the, in the center here. So we're actually going to start with bishop takes c7. Bishop takes c7 is followed up with you either have knight takes or king takes. King takes, you have queen a3. And this is deep theory, guys. This is very deep theory, deep dive theory here. We can talk a long time about these positions. But knight takes e7 is a move. Now, watch this. After knight takes e7, what would you do in this position? This is very fun. I love teaching this one. Your knight's hanging, by the way, on e4. The move here is actually knight takes e5. Knight takes e5. Beautiful move here. The knight is hanging. And you kind of have to take this as black because f7 is like... There's no way to defend it. So you're like, well, I'm already here. I've already jumped off the building. So, you know, I might as well keep falling. This is exactly what's going to happen. Queen takes e4, and they in a lot of trouble here. You would think to take on f7 first. But what if you could remove this bishop, right? Check, and actually hit him with mate if they go king f8. Oh, my goodness. They in a lot of trouble right now. Now, after king d8, this is all forced, by the way. After king to d8, sorry, uh, not king d8. King d8 is actually mate on f7, but they usually go c6. This is the best move. c6, hitting the bishop. Queen takes f7 with check. King goes to d8. How do we finish it? Finish him. Like Mortal Kombat, right? How do you do it? First move, rook d1. Rook d1 check. Get more pieces in the game. I tell my students all the time. Usually takes three pieces or more for a successful attack. You can do it with two, sometimes one back rake mates and stuff, but that's not not as much as, you know, pieces with three or more, attacks with three or more pieces. Like, we got four pieces here. So this is automatic. I mean, this should be a crush here, and it is. Best move for black is knight d5. Actually, sorry, it's king c7 because they don't get mated as quickly. But king to c7 was the best move. But knight d5, after knight d5, now we have a beautiful move here, guys. Hope your eyes are on. Hope your tactics are there. Hope you had tactics for breakfast. Bishop takes c6, lights out. If you take my knight, rook takes knight, and that's a check. And this is just out. Why are we still? Let's just get this off the screen. This is a family channel. Now, after pawn takes, oh my goodness, knight takes c6 and checkmate on the move. This is gross. Absolutely terrible. They probably won't want to play this anymore. They might switch from e5 after you beat somebody like this in the scotch gambit. Very, very nasty stuff. So that's just, that's one of many Scotch Gambit masterpieces here with the Jedi. But of course, that's the Bishop B4 line. So usually this always is the same. Anytime I see this, I'm like, uh-oh, they are in a lot of trouble. I don't, they in a lot of trouble when they play Bishop B4 check because I know all of that. So like Queen B3, and now you know it too as well on how you should just attack that stuff as quickly as possible. Now let's look at the main line move, which is Knight F6. After knight f6, you have to play e5 here. Any other move just isn't justified as, as good because you still are down a pawn and you want to play aggressive and you need to play quickly, rapidly. You need to develop fast, attack. You know, you, you shouldn't be passive. So queen e2 is not as passive. Like, it's not super passive, but e5 is just a better move. Now, after e5, they have a move here, guys. And there's a thing called an equal or stronger threat. My students know what book that's from. But equal or stronger threat. Just because I'm threatened doesn't mean I have to move it. So with pawn, when this pawn is actually uh, attacking this knight, black can play d5, which is the main line move here. You also have knight g4. Magnus has tried this with the black pieces. Actually, knight g4. And you play queen e2, and it's a different kind of game. Um, you also have knight e4, which was played by, uh, I forgot who Nakamura played. Nakamura played white, and his opponent played knight e4 here, which is followed up with queen e2, knight c5, c3. They play d3, kind of weird move. Queen e3, and uh, and it's a little bit different, a little bit different game, a little bit different game. But Nakamura had this same position um, some time ago, uh, like maybe, yeah, some time ago, years back. But uh, 94. Uh, d5 though is the main move, and after d5 happens, you have opposite, which is completely terrible, guys. You're already down a pawn here, so it's not good to trade this pawn, and this pawn becomes even stronger here. And you can't take this due to tactics. Hopefully, you had your tactics. For breakfast here oh my goodness let's just get this off the screen c3 doesn't work thanks for the queen anything else you want to give me anything else not a not good right not good at all whatsoever so after d5 we have to find a move for this bishop what's the most aggressive move you can make for this bishop besides taking and just jumping off the deep end not a move but you could just do bishop b5 and this is the best move 
pinning the knight to the king. Pinning knight to the king. And this knight's still hanging. So they need to do something. They have knight d7, which is not played as much. Knight g8, which is garbage. Knight g4, not ever played either. Knight e4 is the main move. Knight e4 is played, and after knight e4, we do take on d4. Knight takes d4. Now we're keeping pressure here. There's a gambit line. So if you ever see bishop c5, first off, they know what they're doing. You need to watch it. Okay, be very careful because they might know this line. And there's lines where you can get mated playing, you know. This just doesn't, if you go for this, you may be getting mated. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't even know how to defend it. Not, I just don't do it. <laughs> what I was taught is that when they go bishop c5, you do not take here. You play bishop e3 first just to be in front of this nonsense that may happen. This is a, a pawn stack line. Usually they can go castles or they can go bishop d7. And they'll transpose into a, a different kind of scotch gamut main line. But this is not played as much. But if you do, if you do see bishop c5, just know you need bishop e3 on there. And I do recommend you do some homework or, of course, we'll, we may do some videos just covering on how to fight that. But uh, uh, bishop to um, d7 is the main move. Bishop d7 is the main move. And what we're supposed to do is capture. I can't tell you how many times I just pre-moved and like castled and was like, oh, I already messed up the scotch gambit. Because you're supposed to take this and double the pawns here. And it gets very strategic, but also tactical at the same time. So bishop takes c6. You do have bishop takes, which is not played as much. It actually just takes away from this diagonal. So when black castles, your queen gets here faster. So that's not really as, as good. They usually just take with the pawn, so they leave the option for c5 open and um, things like that. Bishop c5, maybe even rook b8 or queen b8, which Robert Hess played against Alex Fishbane, who's a scotch gambit, got a book on it. He played him and uh, he actually won the game, but the analysis about the game is in the book. But queen b8 was what uh, Robert Hess chose. So uh, oh, pawn takes um, c6, and then we get out of the way. We're actually supposed to castle here. Then you have bishop c5. This is mainline stuff. And then the next move here, guys, now you would love to play f4, f5, f6. This is the idea. You want to play this and try to mate them as quickly as possible. But what happens is, you know, you can play f4, but then let's say they just castle and they get a move too. You can actually gain a tempo and get f4 in at the same time. Can you find that move? The move here is actually f3. f3 hitting the knight. So the knight has to go somewhere. You don't have anywhere to go. Like, where do you go? <laughs> Where do you actually go? You have to go knight g5. So after knight g5, now you have two ways of doing this. You can play f4 or you can play bishop e3. Depending on what engine you're using, they will tell you what they... Let's actually see what um what Stockfish says here. So Stockfish, number one move is bishop to e3. Yep, bishop e3 is the main line stuff. Like this is the updated version of the Scotch Gambit. There's two versions. There's a bishop e3, which you get some hidden positions that are never there before. You've never seen them. They just usually aren't there. And then you have the f4 versions of the Scotch Gambit, which is uh, when you have f4 on the board, it, you can get stuff. For instance, shout out to Dominic Myers. What's up, bro? After f4, he played bishop g4 on me over the board, right? And I was like, I have never seen this move in my life. I don't know what's about to happen. Now, I went on to win the game, but this was ridiculous. And then I was like, man, I've never seen this before. Because it's just like, this is like one of those, you never get this kind of move. And uh, I covered that and I actually put it in the playlist so you guys can check that video out. But man, this was a wild move. But the, the to stop that, there's always pros and cons. If I stop this move, then I have different variations that I have to like are different that I still got to navigate through. But if I play this move, like this is very rare. And I do like the F4, honestly, to be honest, I like the F4 move. I'm just going to put that out there. I like the F4 move more, but it does allow this, which many players don't know. Many players don't know. I mean, this is very rare. Probably, you know, five times ever I've gotten Bishop G4 and it's, it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. And the, the engine, the engine says, let, let, let's actually look at it, right? Bishop G4, they actually say I should just sack the exchange. Last time I looked at this. Bishop takes um, King H1. Knight e4. There are problems taking this pawn because you can get mated with the queen, knight, and like bishop over here. If the queen gets here to h4 and this queen is looking crazy, there was mate threats. Man, I tell you, go look at that video on like the game I played with Dominic Myers. It'll be in the playlist. So a Scotch Gambit playlist. But man, that was like crazy. So the move here actually is knight to d2 and allow him to come in here anyway. I was like, really? What? Like, who does that? Who does that? You know, right? But of course, 
it, hey, look, that's a good chess right there. Rook takes, bishop takes, and then we take on g7. And his rook's actually hanging his problem. So after rook f8, white's actually, it's still equal. It says equal. But of course, if you think about this in a human stand form, I got some real compensation. I stole both of these pawns. He, he's going to have to go this way to the side, this side of the board. So let's try queen d7. Then it says knight f3, right? And I remember going through this, and I'm like, okay, I can play this. But it's, it's still it's a lot of work to do. And after castle queen size, he, yeah, he has rook h8, but it's no mate threats. We always have h3, and the best thing the engine says here is actually queen d3, rook h8, bishop e3, trade off this bishop because it's annoying. So the rook takes h2 doesn't work, by the way, because knight takes h2. So the idea of rook takes h2 is this right here. If you take with the king, now you're in trouble. Oh my goodness, you have jumped off the deep end. This is gross. Get this off the screen. Rook h8, mate, in a way. I mean, it's about to be mate. Like, you just have to block with these moves, which is ridiculous. You just got to block with them. But you, you can take with the knight, so I'm fine. Totally fine here, and I don't lose all hope in humanity and everything else in life. So, rook h8, bishop e3, bishop takes, queen takes, and the queen's aiming over here. These threats are neutralized. This knight's holding everything down, and then I can just start working this side of the board. Maybe even rook lift, especially if the king starts going this way. I just have a good game. I might have a pass pawn here. We would trade some stuff off. These could be passers eventually. So, it's a very dynamic way of a exchange sacrifice in that line. But that's just something that you just have to know from a lot of experience. I mean, I've been playing the Scotch Gambit like five years. And um, I got that ten five times ever in life, right? So Bishop G4 just doesn't happen. But after F4, they'll trade 94 or 96. If 96, I go C3 to defend everything. I just defend everything and then I'll follow up with F5 and F6. And it's a big problem. I mean, a lot of times I'm coming over here mating them as, as fast as they, you know, put the pieces on the board. The other way, the, the other way is Bishop to E3. Bishop to e3 is one that they may this this actually might stop them in their tracks a lot of times. I, I notice that people do think a little bit more when I play bishop e3 because f4 is the standard move. But going back to the standard move really quickly is f4, 94. After 94, there's bishop e3. Because we want to defend this. When they cross the line, they gotta go. We gotta get rid of this knight. So the next move is gonna be knight to d2. And then after captures, and I'll actually just show you because this is a lot of a lot of work here, guys. A lot of lines. So we're gonna just blow through this real quick. Castles and then knight d2. Just getting rid of this knight. After knight takes, queen takes. My favorite line is this right here. They usually go queen to e7 or f6. Now, this is the dark square strategy we briefly said, talked about. Is we're going to take over these dark squares with knight to b3. If he takes, well then look at this. Look at c5. This bishop is actually hitting air. On the diagonal, hitting nothing. He can try. He usually tries for this kind of stuff. But this is like, this is all mine. All mine. And it becomes a, a parent that the knight and the bishop pair here on this on c5 is, is ours. So after uh, knight to b3, bishop b6 is a usual move. Then queen to c3 because I'm going to put my knight on c5. f6 is the next move. This is literally, I had this in the game, which you'll see in the playlist, guys. Just check out the playlist. You'll I'll cover this game too as well. I already have it in, in the video. But knight to c5 is the move here. Pawn takes, pawn takes. And my favorite thing that I learned from Roman DG House really is this right here. Rook takes, rook takes f1. Rook to e8. And then I play b4. And I sit back and I watch. And I wait, and I dare you to take the pawn on e5. Go ahead, big fella. If you're feeling froggy, then leap as high as, high as you want to right now. As high as you want to, you can do it, big fella. I'm here for you if you need somebody to talk to. And the move is queen takes e5. When it happens, oh my goodness, that is not a move. Can you find a move that ends on the spot? On the spot. Start a new one. What's the move? White to move, rook f8, check. Whoa, you wouldn't even thought of it. Not even in your brain waves. Rook f8, check. If rook takes, why is this such a great move? If rook takes, queen takes e5. Because the rook is gone, removing a defender. So the rook was defending the queen. So I have to take with the king if I want to defend the queen. But that doesn't help because knight takes d7, check. Oh my goodness. Wow, mind blown mind blown poggers and all that good stuff from twitch wow amazing amazing and it can absolutely happen in your game but that is all theory it's very theoretical and there's a lot of theory to this opening a lot of theory to this opening so um bishop takes yeah that's usual that's the usual stuff though pawn takes castles bishop c5 this is a main a main thing you also have bishop e7 too but it doesn't change like your 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 idea here guys is f3 f4 bishop e3 knight d2 just like this f3 f4 bishop b3 knight d2 and they trade if they don't trade then we trade 
and then we try to bully this pawn or get the queen to c4 if they take this way. So for example, takes takes, queen e2, I'm threatening queen c4 to take this. But it could be, uh, usually they take it. Takes takes, then we put the knight on b3. Very simple, very simple. Take over to c5 square, play f5 and f6. So you can watch this video, I highly recommend guys, I mean you can see from the notation above me how much theory this is. But at the same time, guys, if you watch this video 3, 4, 5, 10, 20, 100 times, and then watch the other videos in the playlist, you'll get a good feel for this opening. And uh, it'll be very, very nice. It's a surprise opening, especially for people you play a lot. And even for any opponent you play, they're going to think that you're going to play the Scotch game. And you hit them with the Scotch Gambino, Bishop C4, lean back, and say, Canty said that that's not a move. That's exactly what should happen. So this is the Scotch Gambit, and this is a quick starter guide, guys, on how to play the Scotch Gambit. Um, thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you can. Just hit the subscribe button and uh, if you haven't already. And hit the follow button or uh, the likes in here and share. And uh, follow me on Twitch is what I mean. So follow me on twitch.tv slash gmcanty. Appreciate you guys hanging out here. I'll see you guys on the next video. And we're going to make more videos for these playlists so you guys can keep getting content and material. I'll see you on the next one.